Добрый вечер. Good evening. The first part of the evening track we are going to listen to three speeches. All of them are united with one task. This task is to tell you about what we are based on in our work and what our scientific researches are based on. I will be the first to start. At the beginning of the Second World War, the Nazi Germany was second to none in European sky. By 1940, the situation leads to fierce battles for Great Britain. English defense has a problem, because modern achievements in lane design make it possible for their planes to move with the same speed as cannons fire. That is the reason why defense and the method of fire control of anti-aircraft guns become ineffective. I mean the method that is used at the beginning of the war. A new scientific method for the prediction of enemy plane motion should be developed. At that time, Philosopher and mathematician Norbert Wiener, who is working in MIT together with physiologist Arthur Rosenblut, is going into a question and searching the regularities of system control inside a living organism and a mechanical machine. Arthur and Robert are plum certain that an interdisciplinary field is the most profitable in science. Such fields fall back in the shadow because scientists do not pay much attention to them. Scholars are specializing more and more in particular domains of science in the middle of the 20th century. When Wiener gets to know about the help to Alice, he suggests that their researches could be useful. Wiener supposes that an enemy plane which moves in a straight path, because it is the shortest way to a target, changes its motion as it gets a signal that it is attacked. However, a pilot is limited to possible motions because of his own physical capacities to overloads. Moreover, its plane is limited to advanced aerobatics too. It can crash. Wiener notices a human machine system to which he adds an anti-craft gun and a gunner. He is able to choose a raid body of mathematics to these systems, which can predict the motion of an enemy plane with probability less than 100%, of course. It can also adjust the fire of an anti-aircraft gun. Wiener tells Julian Bigelow about his ideas. Julian Bigelow is an engineer, a pioneer of computer engineering, who together with Von Neyman and Oppengamer is an architect of a fast digital computer after the Second World War. Bigelow is just working on this project about improving of anti-aircraft guns. And when he hears about Wiener's idea, he suggests Wiener should join to this military project. Besides it, Arthur Rosenblut, Norbert Wiener and Jinglian Bigelow support that it would be a nice idea to describe a general conceptual abstract theory dedicated to the search of regularities of control by the example of a moving human arm 
which aims to take a pencil. But the example of sheep control with the help of Ruda. In 1943, their common consideration develops into a philosophical and quite a big short work called Behavior, Purposefulness and Theology. After that, Wiener and Arthur Rosenblut are talking about their ideas for four years. Academic net is rising around them. In 1948, this leads Wiener to write in a book and publish in a thread about communication control in an animal and a machine. A book calls Cybernetics. This book is considered as a base and a core stone in modern theory and art of control of complicated systems by today's scientists. Of course, we cannot avoid cybernetics and error lab, because we work on questions of building direct economic correlation between machines and between a human being and a machine. At some instant, we become interested not only in the scrutiny of the inner world of a machine, but we are also interested in the control of a machine as a whole. The first thing we examine, the first thing we take is one of the fundamental laws of modern cybernetic principles. It's a principal circuit with feedback. In order to explain to you how it works, let us imagine that my body is a controlled system. Let's forget the fact that my brain is currently working on hundreds of thousands of tasks. Let us fence that my only goal is to move straight ahead to the north according to compass. My brain controls all and sundry steps of mine. Inherently, if we consider ideal conditions, I can have a loop at a compass and start moving. I can get to the north. Nevertheless, well begun is half done. All systems live in due time. Each system is influenced by the environment. That's why when I make each next step, I can feel an external influence. For instance, if wind blows, I can be blown off from my route to 45 degrees northwest. If at that time my cerebrum gets a signal that I have a deviation of 45 degrees, then it can tell my body to make another step in 45 degrees to northeast direction. I try to do it. Suppose wind blows from another side and I will be blown off again from my route to 20 degrees northeast. Then my brain again notices this signal and orders to move northwest up to 20 degrees. And only at that time I get back to the right line and keep on my moving. This is the principal circuit with feedback. It seems to be quite a bit logical, but one starts discussing it. The most interesting fact is that the scientists agree in opinion that the development control of compiled systems with the help of scientific methods, without the scrutiny of basic circuit with feedback, is fighting a losing battle. If we don't get information from a system about its current state, we cannot correct its behavior. Okay. Well, we imagine that we have a system with feedback. We are interested in control of the machine world. The first thing we do, we replace a managed object by the machine world. The rest is turned into question marks. Have we thought about? 
Well, we have human needs at the point in both. Why do we need machines? We need them in order to satisfy our needs with the help of the result of machine work. But the point is raised. How can we evaluate the input signal value? One can calculate manipulator with the help of voltage. However, it's possible to conduct with the help of voltage a big multi edge system of 150 united robots carrying out the same task. It's becoming more complicated, and a single voltage control is not enough. We need to understand what should be a regulator, a controller in the system, what should show an input signal value, what should be a feedback loop, in order we can sum up this information with a correcting signal and correct the behavior of the machine world. We spent the recent three years trying to develop an open protocol of economic machine interaction. The first idea that occurs to our mind is that if we study economic interaction inside a system, we should find a theory from economic field in order to control all the system as a whole. We start searching. As a result, we come to the ideas of new institutional economy. 1937, Ronald Coase, who becomes later a novelist, publishes a book called The Nature of the Film There. In this book, Coase gives clear explanation why firms appear at the market. As a matter of principle, there are a lot of interesting ideas in the book, and many Coase's contemporaries and our modern contemporaries agree in opinion that Ronald Coase becomes a figure who lays a cornerstone of school of new institutional economy. New institutional economy brings in two crucial aspects which it studies. The first aspect is that new institutional economy declares that a human being always faces the option of the social institutions which he or she would like to use for communication. New institutional economy said that social institutions have expenses. When a man can use various social institutions for achieving a goal, a man makes a choice taking into account a number of expenses which a man spends whilst using these social institutions. The second aspect is that the social institutions themselves can be evaluated with the help of economic tools. This fact inspires us that we are not met and there are other people who think that it is possible to create a system and to evaluate it as a whole with the help of economic tools. We try to do it. We try to unite an economic theory with the control of the machine world as a whole. We suggest that it is possible to express the human needs in economic language with the help of social desires of market rates. If we follow the ideas of new institutional economy, this controller in the principal circuit of feedback and the machine world as, as a whole are, are a social institute of the integration of the machine world in human society. If we can get market rates as an output, it could become part and parcel of the basis circuit with feedback. That's how we get an idea of robot economics. Sasha Kupitonov and Alexander Krupenkin will tell you about it in details in their speeches. 
As for me, I would like to finish getting back to Wiener. Wiener draws interesting conclusions from the prospects, which cybernetics offers. Wiener says that this field of science has an impact on human life and turns people who study it into people who choose the good and the evil. He shows an example that the world domination of machines is inevitable in the human world. Nonetheless, we are still thinking how machines have to work from the slave point of view. This slave labor stands aside from the social frictions. A problem arises in society when one human being uses another one as a slave. At the same time, people take for granted slave labor for robot. However, Wiener points out that there is still a problem. A man can face cul-de-sac. A human being can start competing with a machine for getting a working place. That means that a man should accept his or her labor as a slave labor too. When I am working over a problem and finally come up to a solution, what we are doing in an IR lab, we are eager to give economy to robots in order to alleviate the integration of machine world in a human world. Thank you for your attention.